What's up, guys? Andrew here, along with my good friend, Kenny. What's going on, Kenny? What's up? And we've just both recently watched Alien Romulus. It came out in the last week. But we're going to give you the details next on Macho Movie Madness, Andrew Reviews. As we said, guys, Alien Romulus came out over the weekend, and me and Kenny went and saw it. And uh, for the most part, we really enjoyed this movie. What do you think, Kenny? Uh, I, I really enjoyed it a lot. We'll get to the abomination later. But uh, <laughs> all in all, it was amazing, considering what we've had come down the pipe. From Since Alien 3 all so, the way to Covenant. Yes. I enjoyed this movie for the most part. Um, I, I did have my bugaboos about it. I guess real briefly, um, you know, for those who may be watching this, uh, just just the plot, you have these, pretty much it's a young cast this time around. Uh, the main girl's name's Rain. Um, she has kind of, would you call it like a special needs android um, with Andy, her her brother in this thing. To me, they were the, they were the most likable in this movie. And, and really the only characters I thought that had any dimension to them, uh, that was one issue I had with some of the characters. Like you had a girl in there who was who was pregnant. She was basically pregnant for a plot point, I thought. But, uh, right. yeah. But basically it's them and their friends, and uh, they work on this horrible backwater uh, moon for uh, Waylon Utani, who we've been told through all these movies that it's a horrible company. And she finally... Um, has has fulfilled her time there and is going to go to this this paradise, this place far away, and they re-up her contract without her knowing for like another, what, five, six years? And yep. so uh, her and her friends, they, they figure out there's this um, space station kind of in orbit with uh, cryo, cryo tubes, cryo sleep on them, and they're going to get in there and actually go to this place and, uh, of course, aliens end up getting in the way. And it, it from that point on, it becomes just a full-on aliens movie. And, and that's your basic plot, is just them trying to get out of the Romulus station. It seemed like once the action picked up in this, it didn't let up. I mean, yeah. it, I thought it came pretty hard with, with yeah. the action. And, and I enjoyed that. Yeah, it, it takes them a little while to get going. It's probably about 35 minutes into the movie when they finally, when the face huggers finally dethaw and come out of there. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I, like I was saying, some of the characters are despicable. The guy Bjorn, I believe is his name, the one that kind of talks funny. Um, you're just waiting for them to get him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My uh, my son, we, he went and watched it with me. And, and he'd never seen any Aliens movies before. He's never watched oh, wow. any of them. So, you know, like him, that that's pretty much just a standalone film at yeah. this point. But, you know, he really enjoyed it. And he got uh, he got jump scared probably four or five times this movie. But he, he leaned over to me at one point and said, I can't wait till he dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, he's the yeah. uh, he's a shithead. Yeah, so. he was despicable. Um, yeah. I'm happy. I'm happy for your son that he got to see this, but I'm also kind of sad for him because it's going to take away from maybe that first movie just a little bit when he goes back and watches that thing come out of John Hurt's chest. Yeah, it. Uh, yeah, because that you know the first one it was that was sheer horror. Yeah. There. I mean, you know, as a kid, as a young kid, when you're watching that, that that's a scary movie. There. <laughs> It, it grossed him out. This one did. Like he, did it? There was some of the stuff in it. Yeah, it grossed him out a little bit. Um, so. I guess we get get into pros and cons. Um, one of the things I loved about this movie, you see it behind us there, is it. It's just a gorgeous movie. Um, the set design, the art direction, the lighting in this movie, I thought is where it really shined. More so above the characters or anything else. It, it did, uh, and they they really stayed true with. Uh, the ship design yeah and they kept it you know it looked when it's doing that slow you know when it's just panning through corridors it, it just brings you back to alien and aliens yeah uh, it, and that was so cool if, if you're an alien fanboy like we are 
I mean that that stuff's awesome. Yeah, I like I like that. It it looked a lot like the, the Nostromo on the inside. You know the the white walls, and then you know where she goes in and talks to Mother. There was a lot of that, which I believe this this is uh, in between Alien and Aliens. I believe the timeline's twenty years after the first movie. So your technology would basically be pretty close to the same, I would think. And this was always something I had a problem with. I couldn't, and and I've never really discussed it with you or Brandon before, but Prometheus and Covenant, these, those movies take place years before Alien. Right. And why is the technology so much better? Yeah. The ship, the ship design. I mean, we're talking that those ships looked like they would have came 200 years after. Yeah, about alien resurrection time or something. Right, and Which so they were I mean, that, you know, that's always silly, and maybe some people don't don't pick at stuff like that, but that that, that stuff eats at me. No, I I feel that way too. Like. When you watch Terminator Salvation, they got moto terminators and robots come out of big aircraft carrier looking prison ships that they have. And and that's way before the future where we saw in the first movie. Like where did all that come from? So no, I feel you on that. Was there any other characters that stood out to you in this movie? No, because you don't. I mean, once they get on that ship, I mean you're you're pretty much dealing with the what's there's five of them, right? Yeah, five and Andy. Well, and Andy. Andy yeah. even makes six. Yeah, I mean, you're pretty. It's pretty much them from the moment they they leave the uh, mining area. I mean, that's that's who you got to deal with. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I would say them too. And you know, Yorn, he was a <laughs> dickhead. So I mean, he really sticks out, but he stuck out for a reason. Yeah. I mean, he was the resident dickhead. So yeah. One character we hadn't talked about yet was the character of Rook, which I thought was interesting. You know, you had the character of Bishop in Aliens. So are all of these are Whalen Yutani robots, are they all named after chess pieces? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I, what did you think of that character? I, I thought it was interesting that they all at that point in time all look like Ash from the first movie. Yeah. So that that tells me that so you have in the beginning you have uh, David, right? So they look like David. So did they be, did they go to Andy's model after David? David's model because that's what's wrong with Andy is he's an old model. They must have. They I remember them saying that in the movie. Trash. Now that you bring that up, yeah. And then I guess Ash's model would have come after Andy. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I That was real cool because it just part of me thought that was Ash. Like when yeah. I first seen him, I was like, oh my gosh, that's Ash. But I forgot. Well, you know. Yeah, I can't be Ash. Ash destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it really hit you with that. That was real nostalgic there. I thought it was kind of interesting. The, the CGI on that they did of, of Ian Holmes' get up on him, um, it was good and bad. I thought they mm-hmm. did the best they could, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of like the uh, Princess Leia thing, you know, in, in the new story. It is. Sometimes it looked really good, but then sometimes, like I don't know, maybe I found myself like staring at it too much. Yeah, you know, when it's an effect, and then, I, and then I could really tell. Yeah. yeah. So the action in this movie pretty well picks up after they meet that Rook character. Um, you've got aliens coming out of the walls at him. What was your favorite action sequence in this movie? The the coolest part for me, I mean, and there's there's a lot of real badass moments uh, when the action kicks in, but when they lock all those face huggers in that room and they all bust out in that hallway. Yeah. Like, that scene was so cool and scary at the same time. Like, if you try to imagine yourself in that situation, like, that is terrifying. <laughs> so, uh, I, I really like that. I thought that was cool as hell. Yeah. I like that, and I like the zero gravity scene where all, all of the xenomorphs are coming at him, and she's shooting, and all the acid blood's coming at her. I, I thought yeah. that was a wild scene. I've been waiting to see something like that in, in one of these yeah. movies. 
And then she uses that, uh, she's headed right for that pool of floating, and she uses the kick back on that gun. Yes. To push her above it so she doesn't run into it. So yeah, that was really cool. Yeah, that was that was probably my favorite action scene. So did you have any favorite deaths in this movie? I did. Uh, I liked the old school. I mean, obviously, I, I really liked it when Bjorn finally <laughs> got hit. But uh, Navarro, you know, when the she got the old face hugger. Syndrome. Yeah. And she got one planted in her, and uh, and you can't make it. You can't make an alien and not have one of those. I mean, because that's, I mean, that's almost like that's bread and butter. Yeah. So, uh, so getting to see that that one was pretty cool. That uh, yeah, that that'd probably be mine too. There were some things in this movie that I thought were pretty cool uh, seeing for the first time. Like they had that deal where they could X-ray. Don't they X-ray Navarro and see that alien inside her? Like yes. after she's pregnant, before the before the chest burster comes out of her, I thought that was a cool scene. It was cool. Yeah, um, that was cool because yeah, it, that that had a better. Uh, I can't remember if they did some sort of X raying in the, any of the past movies. Yeah, not nothing to that extent. Like that right. that was pretty cool. Of course, getting into the bugaboos about the movie, you know, you've got the pregnant girl who's only there, of course, to give birth to the abomination at the end of the movie. But the but the one part of the of the movie where she she takes like a twenty foot fall. Yeah. I hated that whole thing. Um, I'm not a big Prometheus fan. I thought it was okay at best. And I kind of feel like because Ridley Scott was a producer on this thing, uh, oh, we got to get the black goo in here. Or we got to have, you know, the, the architects in here. Um, and I just, I hated it. I, I didn't think that was a, a really good movie. And I hate that it was in this. There were so many good callbacks to the first two. And, you know, there's even callbacks to, to three and resurrection in this that you look at and you go, okay, so, Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I wasn't big on the callbacks to, to Covenant or Prometheus. No. But getting into the big bugaboo about this movie, Kenny, I'll let you take this one. <laughs> well, you were just talking about the callbacks. So they have this, the black goo. And if anybody has seen Prometheus, it is basically they believe that this is can cure diseases and prolong life which if you watch any of these movies you know that that's not the case <laughs> and uh so they have this vial she takes the vial because she has suffered a neck wound and she's bleeding out if she's not already bleeding eternally, like the fall you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, that was a hell of a fall she took, which that whole scene, that was a cool scene. So she takes this and seems to be getting better. And remember that she is pregnant. So she starts to deliver a baby. And this is where for about, oh, I don't know, Andrew, what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. From from the birth scene, we she births out this uh, an abomination, really, and yeah. the abomination to the film itself. <laughs> this creature comes out of her, and it has seventy percent xenomorph and thirty percent creator. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like, creators in Prometheus. It has this creator face and real long tail. I mean, it's just it's so bad. Yeah. It, it's really bad. And it, 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 like you, Andrew, it, when you got time to, to sit on it after you watch it and think about it, it's, I don't know how you, you come up with that. Like, wh where did you, how did you land on that yeah. creature? Or how you can spend $80 million on a movie and your CGI be that bad. Right. Yeah. Uh, this thing to me looks like the bastard child of, of Jack Skellington and that little spider-legged toy on, on Toy Story, the little the little doll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it looks yeah. awful. It made me, it made me long for the newborn at the end of Alien Resurrection. It was that bad. Uh, that abomination was better. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because, I mean, it truly was, and it's crazy to even think that. But Yeah, yeah because people have laughed at that for 27 years now at this point. Yeah. But it was way better than this. This this, mm -hmm. this loses like a half star on my rating just because that whole final end. Yes. Yeah, it uh, – it, that really did throw a kink in it. I'm still just mind boggled by the design of that. It, I, I mean, I don't know why you, she couldn't have just gave birth to a, a xenomorph. Right. I mean, that nobody would have said shit about that. A, a queen or something. About that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. It was there. Talking about how badass it was. If if that would have been the case. But yeah. It wasn't. <laughs> yeah. That was the biggest bugaboo. There were, there were, I love the callbacks in this movie. There were probably a few too many. It kind of felt like a greatest hits at times, but I could overlook yeah. those, but I can't overlook that last 15 minutes of this movie. It was, it was God. Nope. And, uh, I, I don't, it, it, it almost makes the end of this movie unwatchable for me. I, I don't know how it will affect the rewatchability, but yeah, I'll, I'll have pause when I go back in to watch it again. Yeah. And that's a shame because the rest of it was done so well. It was, yeah. It was a catastrophe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this was directed by Fetty Alvarez, and I like most of his decisions in this movie. But that that just bewilders me as to how they could how they could do that and expect us as an audience to eat it up. I wonder how much of that uh, was influenced by Ridley. Yeah, it's hard to say. Who knows? Um, is there anything else you want to add? I will talk about Andy for a minute. Uh, I I actually really liked his his character as the droid. It reminded me of so when you watch Alien, you know, ever you just you hated Ash, right? Because he was he was terrible, and then you get into Aliens, and Bishop is just Bishop is nothing like Ash. And Ripley holds this grudge against him because of Ash. So you kind you kind of almost feel bad for him. So in this movie, you know, you I found myself finding or feeling bad for uh, Andy. Yeah. From the way he was treated, and I guess like well, it turned out like he really it seemed like he could process some of that. Like yeah, like he understood that you know he was being mistreated. There was a whole plot point in this movie where Rain was going to leave him because that that planet they were going to didn't accept androids and just the interpersonal dynamics there and really made her seem kind of like a monster in that moment. Yeah. Yep. But uh, she did have a, redeem a little bit of a redemption there at the end where it's kind of like the scene with Ripley where she goes up goes up the elevator and then has second thoughts, comes back down and goes and, and gets Andy and, and brings him back. Um, where does this fit? in the alien uh, filmography for you as far as, as where you'd rank it? Uh, I I think I'll, I would rank it third. Like I said, I mean, I really enjoyed it, and I think maybe it's because I know we've had Prometheus and, and Covenant, you know, in the last, you know, 20 years. But, you know, as we said, I, I do like those movies. I just, they don't fit. For right. me in the alien universe, you know, when we when we knew this movie was coming, you know, a, a year ago, you know, we we've been pumped about it. Yeah. I've been pumped about it, and I was so excited going in. And overall, I enjoyed the shit out of it for an alien movie. Uh, you know, it was a breath of fresh air. But I cannot put it over Alien and Aliens because I mean, those two are king. Oh yeah. That's a one-two punch, and it's, you know, you got sheer horror with one, and then the second one, you got a horror action movie that's just, I mean. It's a roller coaster. And it's it's a top five all-time movie. It's, yeah. it's badass. So uh, this one would definitely be three. I, I like it more than... Aliens 3, and I like it more than <laughs> Resurrection. <laughs> I'm going to have to live with it for a while. I think it's probably third for right now. I don't think 3 and Resurrection are better than it. I'm that weird person. I think I like Resurrection just a little bit better than 3, just because of the crew of the Betty. 
Ron Perlman and all those guys were yep. interested. Uh, okay, so I'm just looking at that the other day. That had a that had an awesome cast. Yeah, it's just too many weird an things. Awesome cast. Yeah, too too much weird shit going on. Yeah, I'm gonna give this a three out of five, and I almost want to go two and three quarter out of five because of that last act. Okay. I uh, I like it just a little bit more than you. I'm gonna give it a four. I can't give it a five. You know, last Friday at, when I reclined back in that seat and the movie started, I would have liked to have given it a five. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> you know, with the abomination there at the end, that, that I just <laughs> I can't give it a five. Like, you 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 can do better than that. You've done better than that. This isn't your first movie, and the, the fan we deserve better than that. Right. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, if this goes anywhere else. You know, like, sequel range. For now, I'm fairly happy with what we got, minus minus the end. Good. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm like you. I'd like to see where this goes. Uh, and it's making I, money. I feel like we, it, 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 made making money. it made $120 million over the, the last week. How is it doing compared to uh, Deadpool Wolverine? It knocked it out of first place. What's it projected to do? I I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that, but I know it knocked it out of first. And for a movie that was meant originally to just be a Hulu release, for them to make 120 in the first week on an $80 million budget, you know, with with more to come, they got to, they got to be excited about that. Yeah, they do. Because they do got, uh, I mean, they got projects lined up. I mean, it's not like they don't uh, have anything on deck. So they was just probably like they were waiting to see how, how this did, and it's doing well. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I feel like uh, like I want to know what happened to uh, Newt Colony. Right. That on LG four two. Yeah. Yeah. We still got to find out how that all went to shit. And they got a TV series coming on Hulu. That'll be fun. So, yeah. I hope they don't. Jack that up. All right. Well, if you don't got anything else to add, guys, this is Andrew and Kenny, last surviving members of Macho Movie Madness, signing off. I like what you did there. Yeah, you got it. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to figure out a a clever way to do it. Yeah, that was a good one. (laughs) Hopefully Brandon sees it and goes, you guys. (laughs) Oh, yeah.